very yeah. long. Hi guys, I am here in Norboten Museum mm -hmm. with Jose Antonio Corrillo. Perfect. More or less. Mm -hmm. Science educator or at the museum. Curiosity is sort of what drives you to explore different aspects of... Exact. I think uh, all of us, you, you have like two groups in the world. Yeah. Uh, people who think that only genius and very brilliant people are curious and creative. Yeah. And the other group that consider that all kind of people, all the people, is creative and curious. This is my group. This is your group? Yeah. And starting from this point, the question is how to improve, support, growth. Yeah. All this that you have in every single person of the world. Yeah. I call this my preferred toy. All of us, we have a preferred toy. Some of, some of them have a preferred toy related with writing, others with music, others with images, others with figures, with shapes, with colors. But all, our role, my role, is help you to discover your favorite toy. Nice. Yeah. Science is culture uh, in contemporary societies. Yeah. Science today is culture is everywhere and you can find in your kitchen, uh, walking around a forest yeah. or even doing this interview. Yeah. All the science and technology that you need from this GoPro is yes. science. So uh, the black box of science and especially today is is very important because society you know, has again to build a trust relationship with the scientists. Yeah. Because like one year, two years ago, the science was not on the center of the yeah. debate. But now people according to the health problems they start again to be trust in scientists, yeah. in researchers, in genomics, people who is trying to discover the vaccine. Yeah. And this is very important, has changed all. So the last few months have changed. Yeah. The world not just in in the way that we greet each other or wash our hands, but also in the way that we trust science or communicate science. Exactly. So in the way we think about what is a scientist, what is a researcher, yeah. is somebody that is close in their laboratory doing strange things or is something that is helping me to survive yeah. and my family. This is a fundamental milestone. Mm. And mind shift. Mm. Yeah. And will be improve. Like when I look at different universities across Sweden, mm. the only university that has a space program is Lulu. Mm -hmm. How come that Lulu has this position? Are there a, a tradition for... Yeah, they, they have uh, like deep roots with a space. Yeah. Uh, you have incredible figures like Lund Kudmark, that yeah, Lundmark, is Munch yeah. Lundmark, yeah. That is the is one of the most brilliant astronomers in the 20th century and it's amazing because uh, for us uh, for 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 the the museum and I think for all the scientists is very one of these inspiring examples that is completely contemporary today for two reasons. First one because he was able to see very far away, literally. Mm -hmm. He did the calculus of distance between our galaxy and Andromeda galaxy. He discovered that was another galaxy Not outside, yeah. no inside, and this was a revolution. So he was a visionary 
yeah. a local yes. visioner from Norbotten to the universe, to the global planet. Mm -hmm. And the second point is that he was a fantastic communicator. Yeah. He was a, a very uh, passionate talker in lectures, in radio programs. You have in, in, in our website some radio programs. Uh, he talked a lot with poets and with writers about the universe, about what is life, what is the limit of life in the universe, if we are alone. Uh, and he was an amazing uh, communicator was a brilliant researcher, a brilliant professor in university, but he always tried to share and try to give tools and other people to see far away. Yeah. So I was thinking we also should talk about, since you have been working with the scientific uh, aspect of communication, yeah. before this crisis there were sort of a mistrust in science, which hopefully we're able in the current uh, situation to show is, is unwarranted, that we should trust in scientists, we should trust in, in science and research. But, but the reason at the end is because it's important for our everyday life. Yeah. Obviously, it's important for the discovery, for the uh, yeah, to contribute with new knowledge. But uh, today we have millions of challenges yeah. related with health, with nutrition, yeah. with uh, with nature yeah. that w we need to attend. I mean, it's. It's a priority, Absolutely. and it's, the, it's a question of social yeah. urgency. And I mean, it, this is not in, incompatible. I mean, it's absolutely connected with the best science. Absolutely. And for me, the the scientists that will be able to have this big approach, this big mindset, yeah. that they are working together in a very natural way is not something no i know that that the, the the scientists and the researchers has been trained in a very classical culture do scientists do this and publish this and and attend these meetings and this congress and yeah. blah 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 it's like a whole world and from the other side the society arrived to the conclusion is okay this is your business. Yeah. And now the the coronavirus pandemic have changed all. And I think this is a fantastic, a unique chance. First to demonstrate this international network. Yeah. Uh, that is science is not local, it's global. Exactly. Again. <laughs> Again, is how the community has been able to share their results and their uh, contributions in with all the the, the yeah. rest, and and we finish our experiments and we give the the results to another people that is working in, so in the United States. Yeah. Exactly, and this has been yeah very natural, very very pop-up yeah. uh, movement and also the question of the the trust and the connection with everyday life that yeah. I think is fundamental. But why did we lose people's trust? I mean now we are trying to regain it but why did we as scientists lose people's trust? I think it's a culture uh, question I mean from the beginning when you start in the kindergarten uh, society gives you an idea about what is a researcher and this is continuously reinforced yeah. again and again in different ways not only in the academia no. the films that you see Absolutely. the songs that you hear the relations that you have 
all is focused in this direction that is to be a scientist is this but and 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 broke this and and start to think in a different way is is something complex it's not a question of five minutes all the system is perfectly designed to improve you if you are a this yeah. role this model of scientist yeah. and don't give you incentives if you go far away from yeah. this model we have a, an, a unique chance today to start a new dialogue with the researchers and to using this move to another very important questions like climate change impact yeah. Yeah. because climate change impact is exactly with the same impact but in the not in the long term today but and we can see yeah. so that's another example to cooperation and maybe we will be much more efficient in the to solve yeah. these global yeah. problems with this new way to think and to cooperate. I mean, yeah. is as I mentioned at the beginning of the yes. meeting, we are all curious. Yeah. Is what defines us as a species. Yeah. We are all creative people, and we have all an uh, interesting approach, perspective and point of view that we can contribute to fix some important. Maybe we have missed this perspective yeah. and maybe this can be the reason. We have outsourced curiosity to someone else. Exactly. We have to rediscover our own curiosity. Exactly. And this means a dialogue. Yeah. Restart. Museums are a perfect place to do this to start this dialogue and to invite people to reconnect and when you see this reconnection is amazing because it's autonomous you don't need to support anymore it's by themselves they do their projects their experience and it's like independent it's autonomous but this start point I think is, is important and that's where museums come in that's where a museum should facilitate and support and improve as much as possible this connector role. Yeah. That's the role of the museums to start a conversation and change the experience of the people and the mindset. I mean, at the end is you find here something that you can find in internet, you can find in all other places. Yeah. What is different is that you can start to think different when you visit. It's not only the content, it's a content that you are invited to develop yeah. with others. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. So the impact really is great on society if we allow it. Yes. And that's what drives you forward, is that this, what makes you continue? It's a very, the museum can be a very, very powerful social tool to impact and to give this, all these favorite toys to the people. Uh, I know a lot of scientists that has been scientists because one single visit to a science museum. Yeah. Yeah. So you can change the life of people with a with a powerful experience. I think I'm gonna let that be the last word. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> Let's see. Bye. Bye guys. Bye.